Hello, everyone. Welcome to Literature Matter Channel. In this script, we will talk about a topic interested by many people this day, which is feminism. In the past, the society at that time was in the age of patriarchy. Women are inferior to men. According to that, the females' writings were limited. Women could not write or publish their works freely. So today, we are going to talk about one of prominent feminism works. Which is the prologue by Anne b r e s t r e e t First of all, we will talk about the biography of the writer. Anne b r e s t r e e t was born Anne Dudley in 1612 in Northamptonshire, England. She married Simon b r e s t r e e t at the age of 16. t h e r b r e s t r e e t and her husband raised eight children, and she became one of the first poets to write English verse in the American colonies. Anne b r e s t r e e t was the first woman to be recognized as an accomplishment New World poet. In addition, her work reflects the religious and emotional conflicts she experienced as a woman writer and as a Puritan. The prologue by Anne b r e s t r e e t is an extensive poem that is separated into sets of six lines, known as s e t e s These s e t e s follow a simple rhyme scheme of A B A B C C, changing end sounds from stanza to stanza. In among several other literary devices, b r e s t e e t makes use of iambic pentameter. Each line contains five sets of two beats. The first of these is unstressed, and the second is stressed. And b r e s t e e t presents the idea of women having a difficult time to receive recognition as a good writer in a male-dominant world. She presents the women that were taught in her time mainly have this mindset. Women have weaker brains and a lack of intelligence. Furthermore, the women are not allowed to touch political issues as those things are superior to the women, and only for men. She even mentioned how the men look down on the women who write that they should focus more on solving rather than writing. However, that belief does not defend some women who especially and b r e s t e e t from writing. Nonetheless, it is a great motivation for her. She even mocks the men' audacity regarding writing skills. Within her poetry, she utilizes the technique of metaphor to make men feel ashamed. In the 17th century, we cannot deny that men have more right than women. In fact, when we look back to history, we see that women are as important as men, but they were never treated equally. Women in the past were still oppressed by society. In the American colonies, women were believed to be a gender of feeble-minded and incapable of learning beyond the basic. Women rarely had the opportunity to extend an education when compared to men. Moreover, women had no right to vote and express their opinion like men. Later in history, there were many women who played a more important role in society, such as Anne Marbury Hutchinson, Anne Butler b r e s t r e e t and Mary b a r r e t t Dyer. First is Anne Marbury Hutchinson. She was the one who fought for the right to worship. She was also put on trial for heresy, and became the first female defendant in a Massachusetts court. As she criticized the Puritan ministers of Massachusetts Bay Colony, second is Anne Butler b r e s t r e e t She could be one of the women who was considered as an early feminist. Unlike the women at the time, she was a woman who had a good education. She believed that the way that she read and study would be against God's will, but she still loved to do it. Third is Mary b a r r e t t Dyer. As Mary Dyer support Anne Hutchinson, she was the person who walked out of the church with Anne Hutchinson when Anne Hutchinson was excommunicated. Then we will talk about the analysis of the poem, the prologue. In the first stanza, topics related to the politics, such as war, are not for women to make any kind of discussion to their writing, as the topics are higher than women's status. In the second stanza, she is uncertified for not being given the skills to write major topics like other successful writers, such as Great Batas, a French Protestant poet. Furthermore, she is disappointed in muses, although muses are g o d d e s of science and arts, they do not bestow attainable writing ability for her. 
In the third stanza, the contempt in women's writing that is expectedly equivalent to a young boy's skill in the writing is prevalent in the society. Works written by the women will always be underestimated and unappreciated. In the fourth stanza, Brastid, who see herself weak and unskillful, will work on her writing until she becomes a successful writer. Just as the Greek, who before has been impediment but later overcome the illness. In the fifth stanza, ironically, men think that the hands of her and other women are suitable for needlework rather than writing. Even one day she can prove her success as a writer, those men will consider her success as luck. In the sixth stanza, Brastid mentions the Greeks in old days to condemn men in her days. She asserts that the Greeks are better than the men, as they know that women are in charge of science and arts. Muses are made to be a goddess of science and arts, not men. Though this is true, men will not accept it and think of the Greeks as a fool. In the seventh stanza, Brastis says that Greeks are Greeks and women are women. There is no way to change one's nature. At the same time. Men will continue to have power over women and outperform in every way. Even though she concedes the idea, she thinks that at least there should be some acknowledgement given to women's success. In the last stanza, she satirizes the men that her work is nearly at their level. She applies metaphor technique to show that she can write well or better than any man of her time. And next, we are going to talk about the idea reflected the historical context of the early feminism of American in the poem, the prologue by Anna Bresti. During the hard time of women that were unable to express their thoughts and capacity, Bresti was considered as the first female poet of American who was successful in the world of literature, the man's world. Moreover. Brestid was also one of the predecessors of early American feminism. According to the prologue, the oppressions of women could be observed through the detail of the poem. Although America was claimed as the free land of free people, women could approach this freedom just halfway. To illustrate, it was true that Brestid could be able to compose poems as she could not do it in Britain. However, There was just the body of women that could enter the glory of the male poet, as she mentioned in the first stanza of the prologue that she was afraid to write about politics as it was too high for women. Moreover, she compared herself with the great French Protestant poet Guillaume de Salute du Bagdad, as her skill was too inferior to him. Although the female goddess Muses did not benefit her any writing capability to compare to him, it could be asserted from these two stanzas that women could not write about crucial topic like politics, even though it was the topic that popular among the early national period, because of inferior status of women that could not reach the appropriate education like men. Nevertheless, Brestis was a woman who had high education, as she learned by herself by reading her father's books. She intended to satirize the fact that women could not write a significant topic because of the lack of women's education at that time that was framed by men. The poem continued to oppress the capability of female writing compared with a young boy's skill. Besides, the idea of male dominance toward female oppression was represented in the fifth stanza, that women should care just about domestic work rather than writing. This slightly reflected the oppression of a male dominant society that framed the female roles only in the domestic area. Despite the fact that America was a new land, the old convention influenced in Britain remained to oppress women in America. Brestid thus used this opportunity that people were focusing on starting their new life to call for women's freedom by writing the poem to express women's inferiority through the men's world of literature. Since education was the first goal to seek equality between men and women, Brestid alludes to Greek historical context, which was contained within the education of men.
to show the capability of women that could be able to acquire and comprehend the same education as men. Therefore, although American people could wish their freedom of life and could get rid of the oppression of Britain, American females still could not escape from the oppression of men. The predecessor of the feminist movement like Anne Breasted bravely stood out for seeking women's freedom in the new land by using the world of literature as her tool. Her composed poems, the highest rank of literature to expand the capability of inferior like women. Even though her words could not help women from male oppression, is what the inspiration of women since then to fight for the right and equality. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask by commenting down below, and we promise to answer all of your questions in the next episode. Stay tuned, and if you like our podcast, don't forget to subscribe our channel. Bye bye.